Unfortunately, the job numbers come and they're disappointing, but I think if you step back and look at the overall jobs picture, we still have the strongest job record in all the G7. So why are the job numbers looking so bleak? Well, that's industry minister trying to put a positive spin on some rather gloomy numbers released today. Statistics Canada had its monthly fingers on unemployment right across the country, and they are not moving in the right direction. Take a look at this. Canada shed close to 46,000 jobs last month, most of them full-time positions. Those job losses, plus more people looking for work, drove the unemployment rate from 6.9% up to 7.2%. And last year had the slowest job growth rate in the past four years. So why are the numbers so bleak? Is the government's rush to balance the books actually costing Canadians jobs? Joining me now from Toronto, Conservative MP and uh, member of the House Finance Committee, Mark Adler, NDP finance critic, Peggy Nash, uh, and in Halifax, Liberal finance critic, Scott Bryson. Welcome, everybody. Pleasure. Happy Good to be with you. Good to see you all. Mark Adler, let, let's start with you. This uh, drop in full-time jobs, and that's an important part to, to note, does that indicate a more significant slowdown than, than we had been thinking? Well, you know, Rosemary, let's, let's uh, um, be clear here. Our government remains focused on what matters most to Canadians, and that's jobs, growth, and long-term prosperity. And what's really um, not right to do is to just look at one month in isolation. We have to look at the long-term trend, and the long-term trend is good. We have over a mil million net new jobs created since the end of the recession in July of 2009. Uh, we have a jobs-based recovery. Uh, we're, we're cutting taxes. We're going to be balancing and having a surplus in our budget um, in the next year. Um, and, you know, the OECD, the IMF, all of the international organizations have said Canada has the strongest economic fundamentals okay. going forward. Yeah, let, so let, me, let, me, let me fact check a couple things there. First of all, in this year, there were five months where there were job losses out of 12. So this isn't uh, the only month where this has happened. And Statistics Canada also says that this is the worst net job uh, tally f since 2009. So this year, uh, that year overall, 2013, was not a good one. Does the government well, need well, to correct Rosemary, what, what it's doing in order to create more jobs? What you have to, and we are, we have a plan. We're the only party with a plan. The NDP plan is to raise taxes, and the, and the Liberal plan is just to legalize marijuana. Our plan is clear. It's a low tax plan based on job creation, and we have been creating jobs. You cannot look at one month in isolation of all of the. Uh, I, but I'm not. But I'm not looking at one month. Those two, those two facts that I just gave you were independent facts from December. I said that there were five other months out of the year where there had been job losses, and that this is the worst performance in terms of job creation since 2009. Does that not well, show that the government? Well, Rosemary, be that as it may, what you have to do is look at the trend, and the trend last year, 2013, showed that we created over 100,000 net new jobs, 85% of those full-time, 80% of those in high-paying sectors. So if you look at the trend, the trend is good. The trend line is good. We're creating net jobs in this country, okay. and we are the highest performing economy in terms of economic performance of all of the G7. That's saying something. Okay, let's get Peggy Nash and Scott Bryson in there. Peggy Nash, do you think that the, the numbers from December are worrying, or that there is anything that the government needs to take as a lesson here? Combined, of course, with the fact that the loonie has now hit its lowest point against the U.S. dollar since 2009 as well. Rosemary, the job numbers are very worrying. Uh, in, in, the Conservatives like to brag about job creation, but the facts just don't support it. In fact, 2013, we're talking not just one month, but one year, was the weakest in terms of job creation since the recession. And more worrisome is we're losing a lot of good full-time jobs. And we have double-digit double youth unemployment. So we're seeing a generation of young people that can't get a toehold in the job market. And this could have repercussions in the Canadian economy yeah. for decades to come. So not only are they worried by this, but their parents are worried about it. It's going to affect a generation of middle-class families. And clearly the Conservatives think steady as she goes, everything's fine. We don't buy it. We think they're asleep at the switch, and they have to get serious about job creation. Okay, Scott Bryson, your take on these numbers combined with the loonie. I don't know if you can address that as well. Well, today Minister Flaherty said that the trend is going in the right direction. He's wrong, and he's showing why uh, the Conservatives are so out of touch with, with middle-class families and the challenges they face. There are 264,000 fewer jobs for young Canadians than before the downturn, and the young Canadians are struggling. And their parents and their grandparents are, are subsidizing them and trying to support them. And that is leading to some of the highest levels of personal debt in the history of Canada. If the, if the Conservatives want to talk about jobs, growth, and prosperity, let's look, look at that. 
In terms of jobs, 264,000 jobs for young Canadians than before the downturn. In terms of growth, anemic 1.6% growth in Canada. And in terms of prosperity, record high levels of personal debt. So mm -hmm. if the Conservatives are saying those are their three priorities, they're failing on all three. Okay, let me uh, show people a little bit of what the Finance Minister had to say in a statement today. You've, you've all alluded to it, but let me show people. Uh, Jim Flaherty says the following, quote, We sympathize with those Canadians who lost their job last month. This is a reminder that the economic recovery remains fragile and we must stay focused on our plan to grow the economy and keep taxes low to create the environment where job creation can flourish. Mark Adler, let me go back to you. Uh, do you think that uh, ke keeping taxes low is really the key to job creation? Does that, it, it, does that still uh, hold water, that idea right now? Absolutely. And we have seen by lowering the corporate tax rate to 15 percent, the federal rate at any rate, that um, uh, tax revenues have actually increased. And it is attract attracting jobs, is attracting investment, and is attracting prosperity. Now, let's keep in mind, you know, as the finance minister said, of course we sympathize with those people. And our job will not be finished as a government until everybody who needs a job can get a job. Nobody is saying our job is done. This is a part of a plan that we have had in place under Finance Minister Jim Flaherty, who is rated the best finance minister in the world, under our Prime Minister Stephen Harper, who is recognized as, a, as, as one of the best economic planners of, um, in the world. Let me just yeah. tell you something. Yeah. Let me just tell you something. That the world economy is very, very fragile. Europe is not entirely out of recession. The American job numbers were very disappointing announced today. So what they we are still having, had growth, though. The U.S. job numbers well, still listen, had growth. Well, listen, they were much lower than yeah. we were. They have, a, they have a lot more to gain than we do in terms of growth because their economy is really mm -hmm. um, not doing well at all and hasn't been doing well at all for the last number of years. And they don't know exactly know how to get out of uh, the, the predicament yeah. there. Yeah. But let me just tell you, yeah. it is, we have been negotiating free trade deals, 42 of them since we came into office. We are creating jobs. Jobs for people, a million net new jobs. I get that, Mark the, Adler. The global I get that. economy yeah. is fragile, yeah. but we are doing, we have a plan in place that is actually working to the disappointment okay. of the Liberals I, I, and the NDP. I, I, I get what you're saying, and I know that the Conservatives like to tout all the titles, you know, our finance minister is the best, our, all those things. But when you see job like losses, when you see job, these kind of insignificant job gains, or not as significant job gains, I should say, for December, does that not hurt the branding that you are trying to do as Conservatives that you? You are the real stewards of the economy. Doesn't it show that maybe that is not the case? Well, Rosemary, what that does show is that you've got to look at the overall picture. You can't take one month in isolation. When we do well in one month, when we have um, mm -hmm. tens of thousands of jobs creating, we don't go around boasting about that. What we say is you've got to look at the overall trend. The trend line is positive. Over a million no. net new jobs created it's since the end of the recession. We are the economic envy of the world. But, but, we are number yeah, one yeah, performing so, economy yeah. in the okay. G7. That's, okay. that's <laughs> not me saying that. Those are all the, all the economic organizations well, it's you saying, saying that. It too, but that Yes, you get in there. Uh, I'm glad he's not boasting, Rosemary. You know, uh, they, they, they talk a lot about jobs, but if you look at the facts, you know, they, they, their across-the-board tax cuts, both by this government and the previous Liberal government, have not resulted in job creation. And we're seeing that, this consistent weakening economy. In fact, the Parliamentary Budget Officer warned their last budget was going to kill more jobs than it was going to create, and he was absolutely right. Talk about trade. We have the largest current account deficit, trade deficit, in our history. So clearly their trade agenda isn't working. Okay, but Companies aren't investing. We're not exporting. Consumers are tapped out. This government should be focused on a job creation budget. What does that mean, budget. Peggy well, Nash? What, Pe well, let, let me, give let you me just ask Peggy Nash, what, what is one thing that you think the government should do that would help? And then, Scott Bryson, you can get in there. Let me give you three. I think they should get serious about small business jobs. They should be uh, rewarding small businesses with incentives to hire and train people, such as we've proposed. I think they should get serious about investing in infrastructure, not just say they're going to do it, but move forward some of the money so that they're investing in our aging infrastructure. Goodness knows, our hydro, our roads, our transit needs it. Lastly, they shouldn't just randomly slash goods and services from the federal budget. We're seeing the impact in our food safety, our transport safety. Let's uh, be a little wiser in our, in our public delivery of services, and that will also have spin-offs in the private sector and create more jobs. Okay, Scott Bryson. 
but the conservatives economic message is just be thankful that you don't live in Spain or Portugal and that's not good enough for a lot of the Canadians the 46,000 Canadians and their families the people who lost their jobs this month it's not good enough for the 264,000 young Canadians uh, the fewer jobs than we had for young Canadians than before the downturn and and you know there are some specific things the government could do right now first of all do not freeze EI premiums at artificially high rates over the next three years to pad your books these are job killing payroll taxes and the finance minister's own words uh, he can uh, we can afford to cut EI premiums and create more jobs in the next few years secondly invest in training young Canadians invest in summer jobs programs last summer we created in Canada the federal government created half the number of summer jobs that we created back Back in 2006, mm -hmm. well before the downturn, we're doing less now as a federal government when we, the need is actually greater. Okay. Thirdly, introduce a real jobs training program, not a phantom program like they did in the last budget. Work with the provinces and give young Canadians the skills they need to get the jobs of today and prepare for the jobs okay. of tomorrow.